Max, we're here at FQXI conference. Uh, your fifth, my fourth. I'll never catch up to you. <laughs> Um, and, and we have a diversity of topics. We, we, our core is, is, is uh, quantum physics, uh, quantum cosmology, but we're expanding. We're talking a little consciousness, the difference between life and not life, uh, uh, social implications. Uh, as you see science from your perspective in terms of humanity's future, what are the kinds of questions we should be asking? We should be asking what ultimately we want our future to be like, because 13.8 billion years into our universe, it's woken up, it has these conscious entities, and which is wonderful. And, and we managed to understand more and more about how our world works, which has in turn given us great power through technology. And I'm optimistic that we can use this technology to create a really awesome future if we can win this race between the growing power of the tech and the wisdom with which we manage it. In the past, we've managed to have the wisdom keep up basically with trial and error. You know, we invented fire, messed up a few times, so we invented the fire extinguisher. <laughs> but with more powerful technology like nuclear weapons, synthetic biology, and future very advanced artificial intelligence, we don't want to learn from mistakes. We want to get it right the first time because it might be the only time we have. And um, so I think it's very much a responsibility of us scientists to both engage with the public and talk more about what sort of future we want, and then figure out what the pitfalls are and help our fellow humans figure out how to navigate around them. Let's focus on um, AI in, in specific. I think nuclear weapons has its own sort of uh, um, sociology has already been developed over the years. So what, what are the issues with AI and how are you addressing them? So I think artificial intelligence will be the most powerful technology ever. It's, First, science helped us replace our muscle power by machines that could lift heavier things and move faster. And now, if AI succeeds, we're going to have machines that can also replace all our mental efforts and ultimately do everything we humans can and even better. And um, of course, everything I love about society is the product of intelligence. So if we can amplify our own intelligence with machine intelligence, there's a great potential for good. But needless to say, there's also a lot of things that, that could go wrong. We control this planet now, not because we're stronger than tigers or have sharper claws, but because we're smarter than them. You know, if we create machines that are smarter than us, it's not, not guaranteed that we can stay in control. And um, in the shorter term, there's also all these questions. If we replace ourselves on the job market, then um, we'll, how will we make sure that, that everybody still has enough resources to to live a reasonable life, rather than having some sort of horrible income inequality. How do we ensure that people, even if we can distribute the wealth from the machines around, that people can find meaning and purpose in their lives? Mm -hmm. I think we've never had a technology that poses more basic questions mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. what we want it to mean to be human. We've had a poor history, uh, speaking as a member of the human race, in controlling technologies. Uh, in, uh, in, in, we could say things shouldn't be done, whether it's gen genetic engineering or nuclear weapons, and that some groups of human, of, of humans do it, and then others feel compelled to, to at least not them, not let them take over. And that creates a, an arms race in all of these categories. We're seeing the beginnings of it with AI, with right. ro robots that can kill people that are under control now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so w how can you uh, uh, assure that even though you have the right ideas, that it's not something that you need, a, it's not a majority vote. You have to get almost everybody on board uh, because if there are outliers with exceptions, that, that messes up the whole, the whole strategy. Yeah, you were talking about limiting and controlling technology, but I, I think even before discussing that, there's something we need to do first. Namely, identify what are the really tough questions we need to answer, and then do research you know, to answer them. Uh, there's an encouraging precedent from biotech, where in the 70s, people were like, hey, wait a minute, maybe we should think a little bit about hard questions before we start messing with the human the genome. And, a lot of thought went into this, and a lot of good guidelines came out, and they have not had any terrible disasters mm. since. Uh, right now is precisely the time when we need to start thinking about this in AI, because we're beginning to get self-driving cars on the street, and a lot of jobs are automating away. And basically, 
it might be very hard to get answers to the research. So we shouldn't start. We should start researching it now. You know, not the night before we need it. Do you have any sense? Uh, I, I I know this, is, this sounds uh, this sounds like a silly question, but to to look out a hundred years, a thousand years, uh, and to force yourself to a- to answer unanswerable questions. You know, fifty years in the future, everything is like magic. But but if you had to go out there to to that period of time to envision what that world could look like, what would you say? So it's fascinating for me talking with all my AI expert friends. Some of them think that even in 100 years, we still will not have AI that can write books or make TV shows or these sort of things. But a lot of other ones think we will have that within the next century and maybe even sooner. So I'm not so interested in speculating about how fast it's going to happen. I'm much more interested in, in actually getting to work and trying to answer some of these tough questions that we're going to need whenever it happens. Because if you want to win this wisdom race again and have wisdom keep pace with the power of technology, and there's a huge funding in just making AI more powerful and no funding at all <laughs> for make, for developing the wisdom, right? Then rather what, than what trying to slow down the juggernaut, instead let's invest in, in research. What are the tough questions? Just give For me example, tip. if you uh, create a... Um, very advanced artificial intelligence system. How do you ensure that it's actually going to do what you want? How do you make machines learn what we humans want? Our children learn a lot from observing our behavior. <laughs> but we don't quite know how they do them. There's a fascinating technical research program beginning to start about this. How can you guarantee that as machines get smarter, they'll still want the same things? And what do we want anyway? Whose values should they have? This isn't just for the nerds <laughs> to study. This is for everybody to discuss.